here's the earth all well separated with uh, all of the metals where they're supposed to be in the core. And then this planet was salted with meteorite debris that brought metals with it, including gold. That's the surprising conclusion of the origin of gold to Earth's surface. Even though the planet had a new supply of gold, there wasn't anything to see because it was just too dilute. The gold that there was was a tiny fraction of the Earth's crust and it was spread out around the planet. It was really rare. And yet, billions of years later, a human could just pick up a nugget of gold out of the landscape. To get from one to the other, the planet had one final trick to play. With only one gram of gold for every thousand tonnes of the Earth's crust, there had to be a way to concentrate the tiny particles of gold into the colour we see today. And across the surface of the planet is something that can do just that. In the streams around Jamestown, prospector Brent Shock relies on the properties of water to seek his fortune just like the original Gold Rush pioneers. In doing so, he's mimicking the planetary processes that finally brought us gold. So this is just dirt from the side there. This is it, yeah. So it's like a little ladder here and the yeah. stream's bouncing yeah. over the that ladder. It creates a little pressure area. Water slows, gold drops. Yes. And you've got your crevices here. You've got your low pressure areas there with the riffle. And if it's dancing a little bit, but the gold can work its way down. And they will grab hold of the fine gold. So it's getting caught just behind these ridges. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you just look through this and look for the colour? Yeah, we look. We don't put our fingers in. Oh, really don't? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's me told, isn't it? <laughs> so this looks really simple, but actually there's a very sophisticated exactly. thing going no. on here. You're the scientist. <laughs> <laughs> The stream can replicate naturally this setup here. Yes. Constantly eroding, constantly rising and settling. Every time the water rises and then starts, you can come out here and find gold laying on the bedrock. Almost a renewable resource. So we keep shoveling this stuff in. You want to look at the gold. Is it coarse? Is it smooth? The smoother it is, the farther it's traveled. Then you want to triangulate your way up and find out where the vein is, where the source is. That's what everybody wants, the source of what's feeding this. Over millions of years, water picked up gold, transported, sorted and concentrated it. And then deposited it in a form that made it easier for us to find. It's a process that's still happening and drives our continued obsession with one of Earth's most alluring colours. This spectacular colour has been on quite a journey. These atoms have travelled from a distant star in time to be there for the birth of the solar system. And then they hit the Earth in an impact which left a golden signature on our landscape. And even then it didn't stop because there were sorting processes, first by geology and then by water, until humans could pluck nuggets like this from the landscape. And still it carries on, because there are atoms from Egyptian jewellery or Inca trinkets that are almost certainly part of modern wedding rings or gold bullion. So the cycling carries on, but this fantastic colour stays exactly the same.